Okay, here's a, a fifth example, and this one's actually a little different, right? Because uh, when we go to make our choices of u and dv, we're faced with a dilemma. Um, and the dilemma is that uh, we don't have anything whose derivative goes to zero, um, so we have to make a choice. The way that I tend to make my choices in this case, um, I think about, can I find the anti Because derivatives are much easier to find. So I want to choose something that I can find an antiderivative of. In this case, I could find the antiderivative of either of these. Um, so now I just decide, well, I'd much rather be finding antiderivatives of e to the x, because they're just e to the x, than sine, which I could do. But I'm much more comfortable taking derivatives of sine than I am antiderivatives. Um, so du is cosine. V, that's a dx there, and v is e to the x. So I get that um, my original integral, which I'm calling i, I'm equals i, is um, e to the x sine of x minus the integral of um, e to the x cosine of x dx. And now I'm stuck with another integration by parts, so I'm going to say that u is cosine of x, and dv is e to the x dx again, which I can almost fit on the screen. So now I have that um, i equals e to the x sine of x minus the quantity, um, oh, I forgot to do the whole thing, du is negative sine of x dx, and v is again e to the x minus uh, uv, so e to the x cosine of x minus the integral of v du, which um, since du is negative sine of x, this becomes plus e to the x sine of x dx. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, really, if I look at it, I have i equals e to the x sine of x minus e to the x cosine of x where I am not consistent about putting parentheses around things, um, and then minus the integral of e to the x sine of x. But if I look, that's the original integral again. So really, it's just minus i. So if I bring that over, I get that 2i is equal to e to the x sine of x minus e to the x cosine of x. And so finally, the answer that I'm really looking for is that the integral is e to the x sine of x minus e to the x cosine of x, which obviously I could have factored, all divided by 2. And then I'm going to throw a plus c at the end. And so that is a problem that loops on itself. Um, and that frequently happens when you have two functions, uh, neither, of, neither of which have a derivative that goes to zero. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Don't give up just because you end up with uh, another integral that looks like integration by parts. It could take more than two rounds before it loops on itself, but eventually it'll loop on itself. Um, so I know that's a tough one, but uh, I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck with that.